Welcome to Troll Toasting 101. Um, let's dive right in. Uh, my name is Joel Hakeem. I've uh, been with Brave and Incredible for the last two years, playing the game off and on since 2009. Um, for those of you who don't know, Incredible is Brave Collective's uh, high skill uh, high skill point PVP corporation. Anyone with 20 million or more skill points, certainly uh, welcome to join. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, if you are PVP focused and excited to undock and, and make a red kill board. Um, jumping into today's content, we are going to cover it, the, the basics of SOV warfare or entosis. We're going to talk about how the sovereignty system works in EVE. Uh, we'll talk about TCUs and iHubs. We're going to cover ADMs and what they are. And we'll also talk about vulnerability windows. At the conclusion of the content, I will uh, share with everyone the details of our top toaster competition. And then once the recording stops, um, I'll uh, make sure everyone here who wants one will get a free troll toasting Atron to undock and explode in space. All right, jumping in. Um, sovereignty system in EVE. Um, it has been uh, through a number of changes over the years, but in 2016, uh, changed uh, pretty dramatically. So uh, in any system in NullSec, um, two things happen from a sovereignty standpoint. Number one, you can plant your flag in space and claim the system for your uh, corporation and alliance. You do that with a territory claim unit or TCU. Uh, once you own that system, or even if you don't own that system, uh, you can put in what's called an infrastructure hub or iHub. Uh, on that iHub can be placed upgrades to the system that allow your corporation or alliance to do all kinds of fancy stuff in that system, like put uh, advanced manufacturing facilities in the system to um, be able to manufacture capitals in that system, to be able to put in an Ansiblex in that system. Um, all kinds of things are possible when you have the iHub. In, in EVE Online, the TCU really doesn't mean anything. It's simply slapping uh, your name on it. The iHubs are what really matters because of all the things I just mentioned. So the reason we care about toasting iHubs and not really care about toasting TCUs is because the iHubs are what make all that fun stuff possible. Um, in order to, uh, to attack an iHub, um, you have to have an Entosis link module on your ship. Um, there are two uh, versions of the Entosis link module and Entosis link one which runs anywhere from 15 to 30 million isk, depending. Uh, in war, those prices tend to escalate. And an Intosis Link 2 module uh, that can cost upwards of $50 million a pop. Um, the biggest difference between uh, Intosis Link 1 and Intosis Link 2 is what's called the warm-up cycle. It is five minutes per cycle uh, for an Intosis T1 link and two minutes uh, per cycle for an Entosis T2 link. The reason this matters is because when your Entosis link is activated, you cannot go faster than 4,000 meters a second, and uh, you cannot uh, warp or cloak. And so um, the, the shorter the link cycle time, the less amount of time you are, uh, honestly, a sitting duck in space tethered to an iHub. Um, you have to have Stront in your cargo. Each cycle of the Entosis link uses one unit of Strontium clathrate. Uh, and the amount of time it takes to capture an iHub or TCU depends on the activity defense multiplier or ADM of the system, which we will cover here shortly. Uh, let's talk about troll toasting for a second. What is troll toasting? Troll toasting is when a single player or a group of players or an entire fleet in some of the large SOV warfare battles uh, attempt to capture a TC or iHub with two goals. Number one, to harass the enemy, and number two, to create a reinforcement timer. Um, when we are troll toasting, we are using cheap and disposable ships in a T1 link because these things die all the time. So uh, rule number one is when you undock in a toaster, you should expect to die. Um, 
you, you know, this is all about staying alive and living to toast again. Um, getting ready to troll toast, number one, you can take literally any ship and put an Entosis link module in the high slot. Uh, you can do it on a rookie ship uh, for the memes. Um, the other day, uh, a fleet of incredible Talwars dropped a missile rig or mod uh, and put Entosis links in a high slot and had a very high DPS um, Entosis monster. Uh, out there, which is how we got 5 VTech reft right next to in its staging in 49U. Um, you want to open up Dotland. Uh, links to Dotland for Aquarius and Delve are in the MOTD. You're going to want to bookmark both of those. Uh, you want to find a target system. Uh, ideally, you're looking for low ADM systems um, because the, the amount of time it takes to toast a system is directly related to the value of the ADM. Um, increments of, of whole numbers um, equal 10 minutes of toasting time. So ADMs of one are 10 minute timers, ADMs of six are 60 minute timers. So if any of you have been wondering uh, why you see so many pings out for ADM fleets, it's because ADMs are impacted by two things. Number one, how much ratting you do, and number two, how much mining you do. The, the ADMs are a function of industry and military index, and the more rats you kill, and the more mining you do in a system, um, CCP's mechanic uh, basically uh, rewards uh, corporations and alliances for, for owning systems in which they are active. So when activity drops, ADMs drop, and it becomes easier to capture hubs in TCUs. Um, those are the basics. Uh, we'll, we'll do Q&A here in a little bit. I'll, uh, I'll keep going. A couple of sample fits uh, also posted in the MOTD. Um, you can, uh, I recommend two fits. Uh, one is the Entosis Atron and the second is the Entosis Tristan. Uh, the Entosis Atron is really the new bro troll toaster ship of choice for a couple of reasons. What you'll see is that it has uh, an ECCM module in the mid slot. Um, that is an electronic countermeasures script. Um, what the defenders will tr often try to do is send a burst jamming interceptor uh, in on top of you to break your lock on the IHOP. When they do that, uh, the, the timer has to start all over again, but importantly, your red cycle on your entosis module does not stop. So you're sitting there in space, unable to go faster than 4,000 meters a second, unable to cloak, unable to warp, and you have to wait for your cycle to start all over again. So it's a real pain in the ass. Um, the Tristan is a nice fit for those of you who are more PVP minded. Um, those drones uh, can project out um, with good drone skills far enough to um, scare off any burst jamming interceptors that land on you or any kind of single ship response fleets, which you will get a lot of. Um, if you want to have some staying power, um, Tristan, uh, the Intosis Tristan is a, is a way to stay on grid for a little bit longer and not be uh, completely defenseless. Um, in the war last summer with Fraternity, uh, Test actually put Intosis modules on um, fully fit Minakawa's um, capital uh, rep ships and stuck those on IHUBs. Uh, those things are really hard uh, to get off a node. Um, the, uh, the interesting uh, mechanic with capital ships and Entosis mods is there is a 5x penalty for, um, for, the, for the timer if you put an Entosis module on a capital ship. So CCP says, okay, you can put big ships out there that are hard to kill, but it's going to take you five times the time to do it. Uh, so for purposes of what we're doing here, um, I recommend the Atron fit. We'll be giving each of you uh, one of these in the class. Uh, get out there and, uh, and cause mayhem. So uh, what I have open here is the link that's available in the MOTD. This is the Dotland map of Aquarius. Uh, what you can see here um, is that um, is system vulnerability. So if you open up this link for Aquarius or Delve, any systems uh, when the vulnerability window, you can see it right here, on uh, this drop down, 
When the bubble is green, it means you can't toast it. The system is invulnerable to entosis. When the system is red, uh, or uh, what is that uh, orange sherbet color, um, the system is vulnerable. And as you can see here on the map, which I screenshotted this morning, um, there are three systems in Quarius uh, that have already been toasted. So, um, you know, we're, we're already uh, hard at work here. Um, you also want to take note of ADM. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, if you click on any of the bubbles in the system, right, so you want to check that vulnerability drop down uh, and you want to take note of the time here. If you click on the system in Dotland, um, you can see the vulnerability window for the infrastructure hub uh, is a range uh, from a start to an end time. Those are the times that you can use to uh, make uh, your entosis attack. Outside of that window, it's invulnerable and um, you're wasting your time. So uh, if you're gonna go out and troll toast, you wanna pick a time that is in the window and you want to ideally target ADMs in the system that are as low as possible. Well, here are some quick 101 tips. Um, you're gonna want to warp to the iHub somewhere around 10 um, to 15,000 kilometers. The Entosis One module, I believe, has a range of 20 kilometers. If you go outside of that max range, um, the cycle will break and you will be red cycling stuck in space. Um, you wanna watch local um, like a paranoid crazy person uh, and anytime somebody enters the system that's newt, uh, you're going to want to start spamming dscan to find out what's coming uh, at max range. Anything other than an interceptor, in particular assault frigates um, like Jaguars, uh, any kind of destroyer and up, uh, you're not going to be able to handle it. So as soon as somebody enters system and you get them on long scan, you don't think you can handle it. You're going to want to align out to a celestial immediately uh, activate your MWD and try to get as far off grid as possible. Wait for your cycle to end and then either cloak up if you have a cloak on your ship, uh, which this Toast Atron has, uh, or warp off uh, and try again. Remember, once again, you cannot warp or cloak while the module is active uh, and um, your max speed is 4,000 meters a second. Um, now, why do we do this uh, if it's so hard to actually reinforce a system? Well, one of the things that's really interesting about this is the second that your first five minute warm up cycle ends and the entosis module goes live and the timer starts on the iHub, the enemy's entire alliance gets a ping in notifications telling them that a system is being attacked. That is thousands of players um, who immediately start asking the question, should we do something? Uh, they'll have to form a fleet to check it out. They don't know if it's your little Toast Atron or a 50-person fleet um, parked on an iHub. It forces them to form. It makes them crazy. And our goal here over the next, um, however long this war ends, but certainly over the next two weeks, is max out the number of pings we generate. So if we can get a system reinforced and some of you uh, will have some luck with it and actually get a reinforcement. Um, the real win here is to just start the timer, align out uh, and go to another system. We're, we're just creating max, uh, max trolling, max memes here. We're trying to ping those notifications for goons all day long, drive them crazy. Uh, and eventually, as the war drags on and as we drop on their ratters and miners and systems and the ADMs go down, it will become easier and easier to actually get the reinforcement made. And because they've been seeing pings for weeks or even months, uh, they become a little bit numb to it uh, and the number of successes goes way, way up. We use this tactic to great effect in Scalding Pass during the war with Fraternity last year. I can promise you it absolutely does work. Uh, Incredible in 2019 lost something like 600 toasting ships in a three month period, which in addition to being completely bananas, um, tells you that the level of effort you put in this can really, really have an impact. Rule number one, however, uh, this is all well and good. 
It's fun to learn things, but you actually have to undock your ship and go out and try it. Uh, it is something anyone with any level of skill can do. Uh, jump in an Atron, uh, put an Entosis module on that, find a vulnerable system, go out and create those notification things. Uh, so a, a couple of notes on our Top Toaster competition. It is live now. It runs through downtime on July 19th. We are paying 100 million ISK for every iHub reinforced in Aquarius and Delve. So if you want to get together, uh, form small gangs, form a fleet, um, put an army of alts out there working together, do it all. Um, the rules and FAQ are posted in the MOTD. Uh, you also have to uh, log your reinforcement. Um, the reinforcement log is a Google form also posted in the MOTD. Um, the person with the most reinforcements over this two-week period uh, will be crowned with an Alliance Medal, the title of Toastmaster, and 1,000 Plex. Um, the second, third, and fourth runners-up um, get a Top Toaster title and various amounts of cash money. Uh, fifth place uh, gets the title Pop-Tart and a handshake. Uh, and everybody who participates can feel good that they helped advance uh, the war effort here. Okay, um, I am going to uh, switch screens here. I'm going to go to a live view uh, of Aquarius. Um, as you can see, um, many systems have been reinforced even since uh, I took that screenshot earlier. So uh, our folks are out here getting busy. Um, if I change the drop down to look at the activity defense multiplier, what I can see are the ADMs of the system. Uh, lower ADMs, like here at 60 MTAC TG of 1.9, that would be a 19 minute timer, um, as opposed to something like W6V TAC VM here, which has an ADM of six, which would be a 60 minute timer. So uh, lower ADMs are where you wanna target. Um, I wanna show you uh, the, the backdoor route into Aquarius. Um, you know, as, as you all now know, uh, we have a staging keep star in FAT 6P um, that's right here on the other side of 4 TAC 07 uh, in catch. Um, 49 TAC U is, uh, is, is Goon's staging system. So if you try to drive an Atron through their perma gate camp here, it's probably going to die. A much better way to get in is around the back here through Conid. So I'm going to. Um, to click on uh, Fortac 07 and show you a map of catch here, right? This is FAT 6P. Uh, this is the staging system. Uh, unless you're in a fleet or have a death wish, uh, you may not want to go through 49 TAC U. Instead, um, you take the jump bridge, go to G, uh, from GE, you uh, he head over to HY TAC R. Um, take the jump bridge now pointing to head GP and head through Kebbers. Uh, so uh, when you get into Kebbers, you can see it's just one, two, three jumps to get to A2, tag V27 and into Aquarius through the back door in a relatively quiet and undefended space. Uh, so that would be my recommended path through. Just a few jumps from GE gets you into Aquarius and as you can see, we've already been hard at work um, knocking some of these off. Um, let's look at one of the reinforced systems, which you can see here glowing uh, orange. Let's go to A3 TAC. When I click on A3 TAC and I look uh, at the, the details, it can, you can see here that uh, this system comes out of reinforcement on July 8th at 0730 UTC. Um, we're not going to cover what happens um, when, when um, you actually have to defend an iHub coming out of reinforcement. Um, the basics are that a whole bunch of command nodes spawn throughout the constellation and you have to entosis each one of them individually in order to capture the iHub. Uh, we're not going to get into all that. What's important is once we reinforce a node, we don't actually have to do anything. They have to form, they have to toast those nodes. Um, or they leave them undefended at their own risk. We're just simply making timers and forcing them to do work. That is what is so beautiful uh, about this tactic. All right, 
Uh, I am going to turn off uh, mute all here and uh, open uh, open this up to uh, to questions. So if uh, let's see here, if you want to unmute and ask questions, fire away. Anybody questions? All right, someone so can. Confirm for me you can see my in-game client right now. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Which question? Uh, so what's going to happen if, uh, if you have a fleet of people and all of a sudden you have eight people that are tied for the top spots? Well, uh, as you'll see in the FAQ, only one person can log the RF, and it's up to the organizer of the fleet to distribute the winnings. So I'm not going to get involved in, uh, <laughs> in, in breaking ties. That'll be up to whomever. Um, we, FCs with FC tags, SCRM FC tags, have a separate competition going uh, where they can earn uh, a top toasting FC um, payout. And so this is really intended for, um, for individual pilots who want to contribute and learn. If you want to ping your own fleets, go for it. Uh, it's a great way to get FC experience. Um, splitting the winnings is up to you. So, um, you know, la last year we did have a couple of ties. I, I simply, um, you know, there were like, th as a three-way tie for second, I just pulled the winnings and paid everyone out that tied for second. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. I have a question. Go for it. Um, yeah, so do you think this is something you really have to do in a fleet? Like you need to tag along with a fleet and then kind of split off? Or do you think you can kind of sneak over there solo and maybe actually get, get something done out of that? You can 100% do this solo. It is, it is the most, uh, well, depending on your level of, uh, of patience and, um, you know, self-flagellation, you, you can do this all day, every day, um, you, you know, by yourself. And in fact, um, in last summer's fraternity war, my daily routine was, because those timers were all in AUTZ, which were horrible, um, but basically uh, wake up, make coffee, log in right after downtime, try to hit a node before anybody was logged back in and make a timer, then go to work, right? So you can do this um, on your own. It really is max effective if everyone is out there on their own um, doing different nodes all day long. I hubs rather. I think we had another question. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. So I'm just, I'm trying to understand on the, the dot land map, I'm looking for ones that are orange. So when you go to dot land, you are looking, you want to make sure that the vulnerability um, uh, selection in that drop down is picked and anything that's orange is vulnerable. Okay. Anything that's orange with a glowing orange halo around it means it's already been reinforced. So take note of when the reinforcement timer is. Um, after that reinforcement timer ends, it is uh, toastable again. So okay. avoid the glowing orange ones, but you're looking for the combination of a orange bubble and a non-glowing orange halo. Got it. Uh, and if you look in the bottom left, you know, if you're a uh, UCT or UTC time conversion idiot like me, um, you know, the bottom left of your in-game client tells you uh, what the UTC is currently in-game. And if that is in the window that's shown on Dotland, you're in good shape. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, on the same subject on Dotlan, uh, the date and hour, it's like the start of vulner vulnerability, but how long does it last? You can see um, the vulnerability window um, starts at a certain time, and it'll say goes through a certain time. That's your window, your start and end. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. I see. So, and they chose to synchronize them, basically, mostly. Yeah, the, the Alliance um, gets to set its own vulnerability windows um, as an incentive uh, to keep ADMs high and to use the space that you have. The vulnerability window is, uh, shrinks pretty tight when ADMs are high, and it's okay. a big, giant 
um, window when ADMs are low. So you'll notice if you click on an ADM6 system, that vulnerability window is only a few hours. On ADM2 systems, it's, it's like seven or eight hours. Okay, thank you. Does uh, going over 4,000 meters a second break the link or does it just cap you out at 4,000? Your ship will literally not go faster than 4,000 meters a second. Okay. If you get outside of lock range or module range, um, you can see here that range is 20 kilometers. If you get outside of 20 kilometers, um, this, uh, the, the timer will stop, but you, your red cycle will keep going. And so trust me, if you look away, accidentally a line out in space, get outside a range, and it's, it's very frustrating. So you just want to watch that. But, you know, so you know, I've done uh, a lot of this. Um, if something is on D-scan I know is going to kill me, I will align out immediately, hit the micro warp drive, and you can generally get 60 or 80 kilometers off the IHUB before they land on you, and they usually just let it go rather than chase you down. But the goal, you just, you know, haul ass until that, uh, module stop cycling and then you can warp or cloak. You so always want to make sure you have this guy running this ECCM script so that they can't burst jam you when they land. So when I'm aligning to something, I am actually physically moving toward it, right? That's correct. Here, let's, um, let's see if Zoom lets me stream. I've actually never tried this with Zoom before. Uh, so somebody scream at me if, the, if you start getting... Um, lines running on the screen here. So I'm going to undock from um, the Keepstar and GE. Eventually. Can everybody see me in space? Yep. yep. Okay. So I am going to go, uh, where's this? See here, Territorial Claim Unit Infrastructure Hub. I'm going to warp at 10, Here I go. Now I'm not going to be able to activate Intosis on my own Alliance's iHub, so I won't actually be able to show you what this looks like. But here it is. I'm going to orbit this guy at 15. I'm going to lock the iHub, and I'm going to hit the Intosis module. Of course, I can't because it's vulnerable, uh, invulnerable, right? You'll get that note. See here. Hey, there's I, a setting in your, um, in your Zoom call where you can optimize for sharing video. It, it'll help if you set that on. Okay. Uh, I've got a bunch of windows full screen right now, so we'll just have to make do. But uh, I do appreciate the tip. Can you see anything? Yeah, it's just kind of choppy. Okay. So... Um, what you'll see here in the solar system information is that the iHub is secure. The vulnerability window, because we have high ADMs, are only 1,900 to 2,245. If it wasn't secure, uh, you would see iHub vulnerable, and I would be able to activate this guy. I want to run my ECM, ECCM scripts at all times, and I basically orbit uh, until this link um, cycles one full cycle and once i see a countdown timer on this ihub and you'll be able to see it tick down uh, i know i've pinged their entire alliance and i have a choice to make i can either stay and write it out or i can immediately go to my warp out tab align to something and and just activate prop mod and by the time you can see pretty quickly here i'm moving pretty fast. Now this is exactly 4,000 meters a second, right? Um, but they'll have to probe me down or chase after me in order to catch me, and they usually do not do that. Now if I want to stay and write it out, right, if nobody responds, um, then, um, then I'll stay and write it out. All right, so I promised 30 minutes. Uh, we're a little bit over. Uh, I'll stop there. A couple of things. Number one, uh, join Troll Toasting um, in Slack. It uh, is posted in the MOTD. You can click the little uh, wheel here and click Reload MOTD if you missed 
uh, any of it. All the fits are in there. Um, fits are posted and pinned uh, along with contest rules in the FAQ. And all things in TOSIS will be discussed in the Troll Toasting channel. So um, that's where we are. And um, I want to say thank you for uh, coming out. Uh, I want to encourage every one of you to try this. And as soon as I stop the recording, uh, I'll hang around in station. Um, you can X up and I will trade you your very own Intosis Atron. So thanks for coming and uh, we'll see you in space.